There's the little piggies. Beautiful little piglets. <laughs> this one's a little girl piglet and this is a little boy piglet. So I'll mix up the colours, see what I can get. This is my glass palette. It's, um, it's really useful when you're working with inks because if it dries out you can just refresh the colours and use them again. Just refresh them with water. I'm going to use some paper to see how the colours look. Piglets are kind of a golden pink, but I'm going to make them pink pink. I'll just make sure that there's no excess ink on my brush. Okay, let's see what this one looks like. This looks like one that I've mixed up myself. Let's put a little bit of it on the palette and then see what it looks like on paper. It's actually quite a bright pink, isn't it? And I think all of these are probably my skin tone palettes. Oh, no, that's a red gold. And that's kind of nice. Ooh, look at that. Pretty. Here. And what's this one? Oh, that's rose gold. I've got a big jar of that. It's gorgeous. I like it when they dry out in here because then you really get the metallics. Look at that metallic. That's a lovely shade. Let's go with another bright. That should work quite well. And then some shading. sun shining in. Beautiful thing when the sun shines, I don't know if you can see it, but it makes the metallics glisten. Can you see? That's so pretty. is a purple pink. That will be a nice colour for the bow. Okay, between them I think I've got it. And maybe put A little bit of this in, a bit more of this. There we go. Okay, that's my palette sorted. The washes are going to be really, really subtle. Oh, I hope this works. Look at the metallics in that. How pretty is that? And this one. This one, the sheen is so subtle. Can you see? How pretty. nose is that's an 
actually on this shade. And then I'm going to go in with the bright pinks like this. more of this shade here underneath and his nose is this one <laughs> there's a bit in shadow there that's the same pink and underneath as well and his sides in shadow Pretty. And their little feet are brighter pink. And the legs have shadow down this side here. So cute. my water that I've washed my brushes out in I want to kind of merge them a little bit there, that's pretty now her outfit is the, we're going to go with the brighter pink, this pink. So we'll move over to the blues. And once this is dried, we'll put a new layer on. See how pretty my palette is. Look at that. Very pretty. <laughs> I'm not going to be using black ink for this one. I'm going to be using my coloured inks in my pens. So to start with we have these. I'll just make sure that they're inked up. So this has my rose gold in it which is this one which Izumi Pens created. Is a beautiful, beautiful ink, and that is in this pen here. I like to shake my pen up. There we go, straight away. <laughs> when I shake it up like that, I do get ink in the lids. This pen has a mix of a lot of my reds, so I think it's one that I've made myself. I think it's um, this shade here that's in it. So let's have a look. Oh, you see in there it might need, might need some more in it. Yes, let's fill it up. Do I want this one or this one? That one looks neater. I'll go with that one. You take this top bit here, and you undo it. Oh, oh, oh look what I did. <laughs> look, splat. <laughs> I'll pop it in there whilst I undo it. And then just fit in these little sampler things. I 
and if I just undo it and then I redo it, that's actually enough to fill up the reservoir. It's very quick, this pen. Look at that though. <laughs> that's beautiful. <laughs> How pretty is that? I'm going to leave it there because it's so pretty. Okay. There we go. And if you don't wipe it enough, like I never do, I'm always getting inky fingers. I just think I've cleaned them enough. This is a beautiful pen. Do not post it though. It's one of those ones, if you post it, see it goes into this bit here and then it locks there and you can't, you can't get it off. So never post it. I always, if I'm using it, have to put this lid away. There, away, out of sight, out of mind. Look at that, so beautiful. So I've got my two pink pens. I will just put this on the stand, as it doesn't have a lid. And I have a beautiful little piggy pen stand. <laughs> Let's put it here for now. Okay. It's still drying. What I'm going to do is maybe mix up the, the blue that's going here and in the sea at the background. Okay. Let's see what colours I want. Let's get my blue sample palette. Now, I don't want my turquoises here, I want crisp blues. This palette here. Let's have a look. Look at that now. It's not gone beautiful. <laughs> I think it's going to be this color and this color. What's this color here? A blue lightning diamine. I've got a big, I've got a big amount of that one. Blue lightning and and maybe a more gray one. Let's see if I've got a. That's that looks like one that I've mixed up. That's like a gray purple blue. Okay. Let's go with these two colours and see what they make. And then I want a darker one, which I'll take this one that I've mixed up myself. I think that one might be a little bit too turquoise. Save that one till the end. new paintbrush. Move the pink palettes out the way. Start with the diamond blue lightning. And then I want to add some of the grey to make it a more powder blue. Perfect. I'll just stick with those. Right, so. See what it looks like. They've gone denim blues, but that'll do. It's very good for the sea. Remove this. Look at that. Oh, let's see. 
Look at that. <sighs> so, back here, there is C. Just like that, and then there's a, a wave there, and then a line of dark. Underneath the wave, there's a tiny bit of dark there too. Let's put that in. And this shadow on the beach, but that's just beach colour, which I haven't mixed up yet. And let's give it some sea colours in his out little outfit. And there's a big bit of sunshine there. Now, have I got a pen that's mixed up with blues? I don't know. Next, I've got to do the colour of the beach, which is going to be a little tricky, so I'm not sure I've got sand-coloured ink mixed up. I might have to mix it up myself now. It's a new palette. A nice brown, so I've got a whiskey brown here, but see, it's very, very orange, and I'm going to want to turn it to a blue orange. So I'm going to want to add that denim blue to that orange. So let's take a pipette. Add some of that blue lightning, diamine. A little bit of the steel colour that I've already pre-mixed have some of that in it. And it looks like I've pre-mixed a little bit of golden brown, so we'll put some of that into it. I might have just created the weirdest green colour. Yeah, I didn't think that through, did I? I mean, what kind of an artist am I? I mixed orange and blue equals green. <laughs> I'm thinking oil paints. This is the problem. Well, you just don't get green sand, do you? I bet you this is the most beautiful colour ever. I do not want to splat my little piggies. I've just probably created a most, the most beautiful colour, but it's not relevant for this. Yeah, look at that. That's gorgeous. But that's not the colour of sand, is it? <laughs> look at that. That's gorgeous. I will decant this for the next time that I draw a forest. I need a spare bottle. Where are my spare bottles? I think they're in the cupboard. And as for how many ink bottles I have, well, like, I have a lot. <laughs> and as for how many containers I've got for ink bottles. I've got a lot. Oh, wait. 
that looks like the colour of sand. Oh, have I already mixed the colour of sand? What is that? That is whiskey and caramel sparkle. There we go. That's the colour of sand, right? I will now decant this new colour. What should we call it? Pine trees and autumn leaves. Look, I splattered. <laughs> that piggy's gonna have a green face. I'll have to let that try. I love it when I decant like this and I see the colour reach. Beautiful. I'm a fool. Green sand. <laughs> what was I thinking? So I'll leave that bit to go dry. That is a beautiful colour. And there's the bottle we got of it. I don't know where I put my little sticky labels, but I'll need to put a sticky label so that I can put a sample on it. But in the meantime, I'll just put a little dab there so I know it's the green one. It's strange, I have a neighbour who loves the colours of swamp inks and that might be a little bit too bright for her, but she might like it. I might give her a sample. See what she thinks. <laughs> Maybe not muted or swampy enough. Okay, let me see what this is actually like. Is it going to be good enough? Is this the colour of sand? Hmm, it's a little bit too chocolatey, but instead of mixing the blue, I think I might put a very very pale wash of the blue and then of the steely colour and then let it dry out. So take that steel and I have to layer it up because mixing it up turns it into green but what oh, there's a green bit there so what if I just oh. how odd already mixed up. And then I want this, but really... Oh, my water's going to turn that to a strange colour. Oh, I've got my water from the other day in this glass here. And it looks like... <laughs> so maybe I'll use that. It's not about it having the exact colour of sand, it's about it having the essence of what we think sand is. So if I take this and add it to this, you see on the edge there it's got a bit of the blue in it, just, yeah, well, <laughs> I can see it. And this is working. a little bit golden there.
Piggy has a beauty spot. Now there's shadows here, but what I want to do is put down the base colour first and then I'll put the shadows over the top of it. This is one of the things I really love about ink is how transparent it is. It's beautiful. That's the colour of sand. <laughs> and I want to put the shadows in and they are going to be in my blue silver shade that and then I put some of the chocolatey caramel over the top shadows are actually very dark. And then I put my silver over the top of it again. Now there are shadows within here but I'm not going to make them grey shadows. I'm going to make them, I'm going to add to the shadows here with pen. The edge of the water there has a mixture between the caramel and the steel and it's a darker line just where the tide is hitting the sand. And here there's texture and the texture is both of the colours and some white highlights which we'll put in at the very end. So I'll wash my brush out and the texture, and that's my beautiful, beautiful brush. See these? You don't need to have brushes that are made with animal fur. This is synthetic. It's imported from China. It's beautifully made, handmade brush, but that is synthetic. And there is no difference, no difference whatsoever from this synthetic brush and a sable brush. So there's no need to hurt little animals. Replace all your brushes with synthetic brushes from now on. Just slowly and surely do it. We all trash brushes. So just slowly get rid of the fur brushes and only have synthetic ones. And as for some of the brushes I've trashed, these are the ones that I'll now use to put texture in. This is an old oil painting brush. It looks like it's made of straw, you see. That's definitely plant fibre. That makes beautiful texture. So first of all, we will put in some of the grey texture. We don't want too much on our brush. Let's go bigger. This one was so trashed, I cut the end off. That makes a good texture brush. Rounded texture because of the way that I've cut it, so we've got to be careful how we use that because it will make mounds. Now 
that sky. What do I want to do with that sky? Do I want to leave it white like that? Maybe I want to leave it white. Do I want to make it more turquoisey? You know that turquoise that I was like, oh, I'm not so sure I'm going to use that. Maybe I'll use that for the sky. I need some fresh water. I think just the tiniest bit. So I want a lot of water. That's so subtle. Thanks for watching.